Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a new reading vlog. I This one starts where my last one left off. So if you haven't gone to see that one, you can check that out. Um, I do have a playlist for all my vlogs so you can watch them like in chronological order if you are into that. But anyway, let's get started. Um, today, I'm excited because we're going to the zoo and I freaking love the zoo and it's a beautiful day outside. So I'm excited for that. But first I want to update you on like what I'm reading and what I want to read. I'm currently 460 pages into Queen of Shadows. This is where I have left off. I'm re currently redoing my tabs because like, I don't know, I just, I just am. One thing I will say about this is that chaos is a piece of shit. The beginning of this gives off very much Selena Sardothian assassin vibes. And I really love that. Like she, it just reminds me so much of Assassin's Blade and like that Selena. Second, I fucking hate Kale. Like he is so annoying in this book. He's so annoying. I really have no tolerance for him. Him and Arabin can literally just like eat shit. I mean, I know Arabin is a villain. I expect Arabin to be annoying and a piece of shit, but it's like a different kind of annoying. Arabin is like, okay, he's just evil and he's horrible. Like he's a horrible person. He's not even, like we don't expect Arabin to be, you know, a good friend to Selena, okay? But Kaol is, oh my God, he just, the way he talks to women, I just, I can't stand him. And I know Tower of Dawn, he got his little like character arc, but like not for me. It didn't redeem. Like he just says and does so much shit that annoys me in all of the books that I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good. I don't, he's definitely one of my least favorite Sarah J Mass like love interests. Him and Tamlin, I don't, I think I dislike Tamlin just a little bit more obviously because like, you know, reasons. But Kale is right there, right behind him. I mean, like right in front of him. I don't even know. If I'm ranking them, obviously I dislike Tamlin more than Kale. Another thing is it takes 233 pages for our man, our bird man to show up in this book, okay? Like that is, that is really hard for me. Also Lorcan, I honestly, I, for, I kind of forget that he was in his little like villain era in this book because it's just like calling everyone bitches. And I'm like, Lorcan, you can shut the up. I'm like talking to him as I'm reading and I'm like, Lorcan, you, you can do better than that, which he does do better. He's just like in his little villain era. So, you know, we gotta just take it with stride, I guess. Another thing, okay? I feel like I'm hitting all the points that I need to talk about this far in the book so far. I mean, whatever. But Dorian is suffering hardcore. My boy, Dorian, I have so much love for Dorian. And he's just going through it. Like, this, ooh, he is really going through it in this book. So there's many reasons why this is not my favorite from the series but I'm just enjoying it so much. And I've also, I've gotten to a point in the book that I'm like, yeah, I love this part in the book, like so much specifically page 461. It's just so good. I love Manon. I love the 13. I love Dorian and Lorcan, even though he's a in this book, but it's so good. And yeah, Selena and Rowan, everyone, like I just, I love all of them. There is more politicking politicking is that the way you say that in this book then I would prefer there's a lot of like build up and politicking and that kind of thing but I'm still enjoying this reread so much this is the third time I've read this so I will read Empire of Storms at some point I don't know if I'm gonna jump right into it after I finish this but I'm definitely gonna reread that as well anyway so now that I've gotten that little spiel out I wanted to share that I am how many pages in? I'm only 16 pages in to Babysitter's Coven by Kate Williams. This has been on my physical TBR for quite a while. I love the hard, look, okay. Can we just take a moment? The nails and the, what did that? This is such a vibe. I love the physical look of this book so far. Wait, what? I love the physical look of this book and I actually am vibing with the book so far. Um, I am trying to listen to it on audio, 
but I'm, I, I really want to take my time with it. Like I don't want to rush through it because I've never read this before. I'm enjoying it so far. Like I, I used to babysit. I used to be a babysitter in high school. It was good birth control, okay? And then in college I worked like an, at an actual preschool and like I did that for years. I think like four years I worked with kids. So I have a lot of experience with that and just like kids in general. And so I'm really enjoying the like the vibe so far. It's, I don't know how to explain it. I'm not far enough in, but I'm just, it's fun. It's fun so far. I think it's gonna be kind of like campy and yeah. So I'm glad that I'm picking this up. And then I'm also really, really drawn towards Rainbow Rowell, Rowell fangirl, which it's so funny because I thought Rainbow Rowell was a man this whole time. I was looking at something, I realized that she, she, it's a woman who wrote this. So I'm like, okay, but yeah, I'm excited to start this. I got the special edition because I was at Barnes and Noble and they were having like a huge sale. Everything was like 50% off. So this was a couple weeks ago at the beginning of the year. And this is the 10th anniversary edition. So this book has been out for quite a long time, almost 10 years, obviously, for about 10 years. That's what I'm also gonna pick up in this vlog. And then I am also going to pick up Measure of a Man. I just wanted to really kick this vlog off. Yeah, so we're going to the zoo today. So I might include some B-roll. Like I don't really know how much I'm gonna be filming. Um, oh, I do have a quick unboxing that I wanna do. I've been doing really good about like not buying like random stuff, but I did purchase this and I also have something else that I'm waiting to come in the mail okay this is so freaking cute mm, I kind of want to wear this today like I kind of want to put this on should I do it I don't know okay Anyway, that's that's what I have. That's what I got. It says through love all this possible. Light it up, starborn tour. I just love that it's like a band looking t-shirt, but it's Crescent City inspired. Hope you're having a great day and I'll talk to you in a bit. Okay, so I did change into the Bryce shirt. So this is my fit. These shoes, going to the zoo, I'm ready. Walking to the zoo. It's okay, we caught a ride. <laughs> Looking for the elephants. <laughs> I don't know where they are. I mean, it's not like they're they can hide very well. Oh, there it is. Okay. Found it. We just looked at the, what were those called? 
What? The little things in the water. Oh, otter? Yeah, we just saw the otters. They were so cute. They were like wrestling. I don't really know if they were wrestling, cuddling, or like their lovers. But it was cute nonetheless. And now we're looking at the meerkats. Just having a grand old time. <laughs> Also, I got these new glasses, sunglasses. Put them on without poking myself. They're really cute. I like them. This is an ugly pig. Oh, it's so ugly. Why is it? Why does its head look like that? We just got home. It's like almost six o'clock. Had a great day. The weather was beautiful. Going to take a shower and then I'm going to edit. Finish editing my reading vlog that's going up tomorrow. And then I think we might watch a movie. If we don't watch a movie, then I'll read some. Probably read Queen of Shadows. So I don't know how much reading I'll get done tonight, but I'll, I'll read tomorrow, tomorrow's Sunday. And yeah, that's my plan. My feet are tired, I'm tired. I'm gonna go get clean and then just relax. Because tomorrow's Sunday and I get to read all day tomorrow. So I'm excited for that. Hello, it is the next day. Today's Sunday, February 25th. And I, uh, this morning we went to, well not this morning, but for lunch we went to go get ramen. Um, I'm so sleepy right now. <laughs> I'm drinking uh, Dr. Pepper to hopefully give me like some caffeine because I've already had a coffee today. But um, I hit 10, can't, ugh, I can't even talk. I hit 10,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. Like that is so freaking cool. I feel like every time I hit a milestone on YouTube, I tell myself it's not that big of a deal. It's not that high of a number. There's millions of YouTubers who have millions of subscribers and you're just like a little dot in the ocean. But to me, it is a big deal. And like, to me, it is special that 10,000 people would hit subscribe and watch my stuff. Thank you. If you are subscribed to my channel, it means a lot. So yeah, we went to go eat ramen kind of like as like a little celebration lunch and it was really, really good. But we did have to leave early because Jake is on call. So he's currently working. So I feel bad, <laughs> but I'm, so I'm downstairs trying to be quiet, not disturb him. And I'm gonna read. I'm excited about that. I am going to start Fangirl by Ra Rainbow Rowell. I'm in a mood for cute romance. I don't really want anything like dark or anything like that. So I'm gonna start this and then I'm still, um, we, so we went to the zoo yesterday. I didn't read it all yesterday. Dude, last night I was so tired. I finished editing my vlog, did the thumbnail, got it uploaded and I passed the f out. I don't think I woke up at all in the middle of the night. Like I was out like a light. So today I'm just gonna be lazy. I do need to edit tonight. I'll be editing my Patreon vlog all night tonight, but until then, cause it's one o'clock now. So my goal is to read some of this, maybe some of this and possibly, this is a hefty goal, but possibly even finish Queen of Shadows. I don't know about this. I don't think I'll be able to finish this, but because I really do need to edit that vlog and my cutoff time for reading is gonna be 6 p.m. So at 6 p.m. I need to go start editing because I need to get that vlog posted. Anyway, so yeah, that's my plan. I'm gonna start reading this. I'm super excited. This girl that goes off to college and she writes fan fiction, Harry Potter fan fiction. Yeah, oh, it looks like Simon Snow. Oh, that's cute. Okay. So instead of his name being Harry Potter, it's Simon Snow. Oh, I really hope I love this. I'm so excited. 
A boy with slick black hair and cold gray eyes. Wait. Okay, so obviously Harry Potter has black hair. But it says there's a boy in Simon's room. Wait. Is this supposed to be Draco? Because it says cold gray eyes. He's like messing with the girl's cat. So that's Hermione. I am Tyrannius Ballastun Pitch. But you can call me Baz. I'm probably not explaining this correctly, but I'm trying to figure out because I know that Simon is Harry. But I'm like, wait, who is this Drake? Like, is Draco? But the black hair is throwing me off. Okay, I'm gonna keep reading. Okay, I am 138 pages into Fangirl. I'm freaking out because I am so in love. She's been reading her fan fiction that she writes to Levi, which, okay, is her roommate's boyfriend. So I don't know what's going on there. Like, I don't know if like they're gonna break up and her and Levi are gonna get together. I have no idea. But I, this is so cute. I love Cat. I think it's Cat or Cath. I mean, it's spelled C-A-T-H. I love her. She's so relatable. It's so cute so far. And I love that there's a story within a story. After every chapter, there's like either a snippet of the fanfic that she's writing or a snippet of the, the Harry Potter story, you know, but it's not like called Harry Potter. Not only that, but she, since she's reading to him her fanfic, we're also getting that story. Wow, way to keep my ADHD brain engaged I'm just consuming it. And now I understand why the special edition says read to me, sweetheart, because she's literally reading to him. Anyway, it's really, really cute so far. If you are someone who likes fanfic, especially if you like Harry Potter fanfic, even if you don't, even if you don't, this is an adorable, adorable YA contemporary romance. It's not very romance so far, but that's okay. It's just really cute. It's about this girl, she has a twin sister and they both go off to college. They go to the same college, but they're not roommates. And Kath is having a hard time adjusting to that. It's like Taylor Swift lyrics. I've been having a hard time adjusting. Yeah, so she's having a hard time with that. Also, her dad is bipolar, so there's bipolar rep. There is one part where their mom like left them when they were kids. So she has like these abandonment issues. So she like clings to her dad. There are things happening. Also the typeset and like the chapter titles. So cute, like literally so cute. And I did not know how much Harry Potter related this was going to be. I just think it's funny that I just randomly picked this up at Barnes and Noble got this special edition of it. Originally it was 35. I did not pay $35. Actually, I could probably take off this sticker on the back here. <laughs> Anyways, I will keep you posted, but that's what I've read so far. I don't know why I'm talking. Oh shit, I have a package. I started reading. I meant to open this up with you guys. Let me put my bookmark in. I got, oh my God, these are so cute. Oh my God, I love, I got some stickers. These are so freaking cute. I mainly bought these for annotating. These are so cute. Oh, these are, these are amazing. I have no regrets. Let me just open them up so I can show you. I had these in my cart for a really long time and they were sold out. Look how amazing. I am obsessed. These are so cute. Oh. I want 500 packets. I wish this was a Slytherin scarf, but I still love it. It's still so cute because Hermione is in Gryffindor, so we support that. It's so funny, because um, growing up, I always wanted to be in Gryffindor. Gryffindor! But then, as an adult, I was like, I'm literally not Gryffindor, and I retook the test. When I call your name, you will come forth 
I shall place the sorting hat on your head and you will be sorted into your houses. Slytherin! And I got Slytherin. That's not a witch or wizard who went bad who wasn't in Slytherin. And I'm like, this makes so much more sense. Even, it was like a couple years ago, my friends were like, what house are you in? Or, what house are you in? And I was like, oh, Gryffindor. And they were like, mental that one. I'm telling you. Bessie, what? <laughs> so then I retook the test. This is like, I don't even know, a couple of years ago. And then I was like, oh shit, I am. Okay. Slytherin! 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 I'm very happy with these. So it came with a couple. I'm so excited to use these like in annotating and journaling and stuff. Yay! Very exciting. Anyway, I'm gonna read now. Okay, I'm on page 180 and something just happened that I don't know if I love how it was done. Leia, what are you doing? Stop. Stop. The, it's not going anywhere. You're not scratching anything. I'm in spoiler territory, so I'm not going to say like what I'm talking about, but Kath, she just <laughs> said something that I'm just like, girl that, well, I mean, for one, she did something that I don't, I can't say anything because it's a spoiler. It's fine. Everything's fine. There, she didn't, she didn't do anything bad. To her knowledge, she did. And then it turned out it's fine. But like, it's, it's, it gave me a weird feeling because of the way, like what she said and like her justification for it. I'm like, because you wanted to, I don't know. I'm like, girl, what? Um, yeah, anyway, that's all I'm gonna say. That's the first time that I've kind of like come across, okay, no, I've come across another problem problem problematic thing, but it's not like anything major and I'm still like really loving this, so. I am freaking sleepy though. After this chapter, how many pages do I have left? Oh my God, okay, the chapters are not short. If I finish chapter 16, which is the one I'm on, and then maybe I might pick up this again, but I'm reading it audibly. Like I'm trying to, so maybe I'll like I'll read along with it. And then I also have Queen of Shadows. I don't think I'll be able to finish Queen of Shadows today. The day is really zooming by. So I don't know, but after I finish this chapter that I'm in the middle of, I will reassess if I want to pick up Queen of Shadows or if I want to try and read along with the audio on this. I want to go to bed early and get up early. So I'm like, I don't want to make it a coffee, but like coffee doesn't really keep me up like that. So like I really probably could and I'd be fine. I don't know. I'm just going to finish the chapter and then, and then we're going to go from there. But I'm sleepy. I could, I'll probably go for a nap. My dogs have been sleeping, snoozing away all day. Also, yes, I have my jacket on half on, half off. I don't know if anyone else has this problem, but I have one really bad circulation. Two, parts of my body will get hot and other parts will not be hot. So like this arm was hot, so I took off the sleeve. Anyway, okay, it's currently 4.35 and I am on page 2.14. So I feel like that's pretty good. And I want to kind of like rescind the harshness. I feel like I was a little bit harsh on Kath. I, okay, maybe I didn't say much to you, but in my head, I feel like I was kind of harsh. And I have to remember, one, she is very young. Two, she, you know, is dealing with a lot, like her dad having bipolar. And I feel like, you know, she's struggling with like her twin sister, her and her twin sister not being as close, her mom issues are coming up to the surface. It's okay to like, for her to make mistakes and it's okay for her to say dumb things, I guess. Also, the dynamic between Levi and Kath is really, really cute and healthy in my opinion. There's no weird like power dynamic. They're just 
to students. About to start chapter 19. I think I'm gonna migrate upstairs just for a change of scenery. I need to let my dogs out and eventually feed them. There's also laundry staring at me. So I have like uh, about an hour before I want to switch gears and start editing for the night. I really wanna take advantage of the next hour and 20 minutes and try and read as much as I can. One hour later. Now we're ready. <laughs> you guys, it's, it's 5.30, it's 5.25. And I've not read anything else. <laughs> Why am I like this? I have been on my phone, just looking at a fucking nothing. I am turning the camera on for accountability. I wanted to do sprints on my Patreon today, but I'm like really trying to be cognizant. That's a big word for me. Of not burning myself out and like just letting myself sit in silence sometimes. I still need to do reading sprints for Patreon and I'm going to this week, but today just didn't feel like the right day to do it. I don't know why. Like I totally could have, but I just, I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to like overwhelm myself because I know that like I have to edit tonight anyway. I, I've just been a lazy bean and that that's fine. That's okay. But, um, I'm going to read a little bit more on chapter 19. Let me just shut up and read. Okay, to be fair, uh, I did read between now and the last update which was like five seconds ago for you but i remembered that i needed to feed my dog so i got to feed my dogs and i'm on page 223 i have 15 minutes until my deadline until six o'clock and then i need to start editing yeah i'm just gonna shut up and we're gonna read it's gonna be fine <laughs> I want to show you all something so I just fed the dogs and took them outside and like <laughs> we have this routine where after they eat we always me and Jake will, and the dogs will come in here to like watch a movie or watch tv or I'll read or whatever and Zelda came in here and I'm like girl we are not in here it is not movie time like anyway yeah so it's officially 6 p.m and I made it to page 232 so <laughs> There's that. I'm gonna edit now. Got shit to do. The next day. What are you doing? They are being so goofy. I started rereading this on audio as you guys saw and i got to page 184 today so i like was listening while i was working i mean this is the third time i've read this book so i can do a pretty good job of like keeping up with the audiobook i love flipping through like my old annotations and the artwork is so pretty like i just i'm obsessed yeah i really love this book and i'm super excited for empire of the damned Hello, today is Thursday. It's been a few days. The last time we talked was Sunday and I have finished a book and I want to talk about it. So I finished Rainbow... No, that's the author's name. I finished Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell and I really liked this. Like I really enjoyed it. It was super cute. It was just what I was in the mood for. I'm still currently 
in the middle of the babysitter's coven, which it's so funny that I decided to pick up these books at the same time because they're kind of similar. Her dad in Fangirl, her dad has bipolar, and then in Babysitter's Coven, her mom has bipolar. And so they're similar in that way. Like, they're not really anything alike, but they are YA, so it's kind of like that. But it's funny because I, while reading both of these at the same time, obviously not like at the same time, but like two current reads, you know what I'm saying? Okay, hold on. <laughs> just like, just to show you my reading taste, I just think this is so funny because I'm like reading Empire of the Vampire, Queen of Shadows, and then like these silly YA books. I need to hurry up with this update because I'm going on reading sprints in 15 minutes for Patreon and I'm super excited about it because I haven't done reading sprints all month. And it's the last day of February and I really want to finish The Babysitter's Coven. Um, but what was I saying? Okay, yeah, so... These were two of my current reads, right? I felt myself gravitating to this one way more. Like, I wanted to pick up this one, but the reason I finished this yesterday, last night, is because I was like, I want to get it out of the way for February, and I knew I wanted to do reading sprints today, and I didn't want to read it. For some reason, I was like, I just want to, like, get this one out of the way. So I did enjoy Fangirl. I'm giving it four stars because I was obsessed with, like, the fan fiction aspect of it and the fact that she wrote fan fiction and it was really cute. There were some issues I had with it, like, some problematic things, but nothing, like, nothing too upsetting. Yeah, I really love this and I think I'll probably read it again eventually. It is really cute. But I felt myself wanting to just pick this book up because of the paranormal, paranormal aspect to it. Okay, so it is in the synopsis. It's not like a spoiler, but basically, and it's also on the back of the book. But, um, so she's obviously in a babysitter's club to make money. And this, like, popular girl is what Cassandra's kind of described as, joins the babysitter club. And Cassandra's mom, they find, like, this note that Cassandra's mom leaves her. It says, find the babysitters. So that's why Cassandra joins. They end up, like, finding out that they have a heroic lineage of superpowers magic rituals and saving the innocent from seriously terrifying evil and all before parents get home. Like I, for some reason, am just like so obsessed with this. It's so unserious, but it has like this fun paranormal aspect. It was like exactly what I was in the mood for. And I can't believe honestly that it, I haven't finished it yet. I think it is because I'm reading it audibly and I keep having to like rewind because that's one thing about me is if it's an audiobook, it's gonna turn into background noise. But I legitimately like wanna pay so much attention to what's going on. I am gonna read this on sprints, hopefully finish. Okay, I'm not like in love obsessed, but I'm having a really fun time. Also, I didn't even mean to do this, but if you're new to my channel, then you probably don't know that I paint my nails like every other day, like I repaint them. And the color I chose, this was not intentional, but it matches so perfectly and I'm just like obsessed with that. So yeah, I love the color, this color, it's so pretty. But, oh, I do have a package, I totally forgot. Okay, I have this package and I don't think I ordered any books, but honestly it could be something random I ordered, so I don't know. this to me. <gasps> There's no note! I am gonna kill Amazon. Oh my god, what? Who bought this for me? This is so sweet! <gasps> I want, I have to find out who sent this to me. Thank you so much. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh my god, I was not expecting this. Oh, look at the chapter pages. I love this book so much. It's super dark. It's a Medusa retelling. Thank you so, so much. I need to post to my story to ask who sent me this. I could cry. I need to hop on to reading sprints, but really, really quick, I just wanna 
tell you what page I'm on. For Queen of Shadows, I'm on page 575. I know I like kind of updated you guys at the beginning of this vlog for this. This book pops off. Literally at the place that I was at the other day, which was page 461, it just pops the fuck off. It gets so good. But I'm also on page, let's see, 384 for Empire of the Vampire. I was physically reading some of this and like updating my tabs. So I'm gonna read some more of this tonight. So I think that's all the ones I'm in the middle of. Empire of the Vampire, Queen of Shadows, and Babysitter's Coven. I finished Fangirl. Yeah, so that's it. Okay, so yeah, I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Okay, so I'm currently on Sprint with Patrons and I have four minutes left until the sprint's over. Um, but I just want to say that this is like, I just, I'm having such a good time with this book. She is dressed up as Laurie Strode from The Babysitter in Halloween, which is such a vibe because she's a babysitter and she's babysitting on Halloween. I don't know why, I just, I love that. Also, there's a bunch of Mean Girls references and I'm like, Yes, we love the Mean Girls. I love that movie so much. I know I keep saying it's such a vibe for everything, but like, such a vibe. Yeah, I'm currently still on reading sprints. Um, well, technically they're like productivity sprints now because I am working, but I just wanted to give a huge thank you to Books with Mackenzie. Mackenzie from Books with Mackenzie on Instagram for sending this to me. You are so sweet. It is so nice of you to send this to me. And I just thank you so much. It's just really sweet and kind and made my day. And I love this book so much. And I'm so happy to have it. Thank you, Mackenzie. I guess I'll update you guys on like my reading. I made it to page 272 while we were like on reading sprints, which is pretty good, like honestly, because I was hoping to finish the book, but that was a little bit. It started on page 209 and I ended up on page 272. I feel like that's pretty decent. I do plan on finishing this book today though. I have a hard time ending sprints because I, I do love them so much, but like once I get started, I'm like, we just keep going. So they were supposed to be like lunch break sprints, but now it's turning into like sprint while I work. <laughs> Also, it's published day to Empire of the Damned. I'm waiting on my copy. I still have to finish my reread of Empire of the Vampire. The March book club book got announced on Patreon for the I Didn't Know You Could Read book club. I didn't know you could read. I'm excited about that. Anyway, the sprint ends in 10 minutes and I'm gonna try and get a couple pages read. Three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. I finished a book. I'm so happy. It definitely took me all day. I really enjoyed this. I am very sleepy right now. I feel like I need caffeine before I can really like talk about the book. I just had like a really good time with it. I wouldn't say it ends on a cliffhanger though. So, okay, I started on page 208 today. Let's see how many pages it was. 355, so that's pretty good. My goal was to read some of this tonight and I'm like pretty tired and I need to make dinner because I'm hungry. What I'm gonna do is we're on our last reading sprint. Once I get off sprints, I'm going to make myself something to eat and then I'm gonna read some more Empire of the Vampire. Um, I also still have like 100 pages of Queen of Shadows to go. I need to update my reading journal. That's really all I have to say is I finished a book and I feel accomplished and I feel like I did something. Yeah. Also, I will say because I did have the audio and that can like really impact 
a reading experience because I know reading physically without an audio sometimes it's like harder to get through a book if you're not like loving it so I don't know if having the audio made me like really enjoy this book a lot more than I would have if I was reading it physically take that into consideration but the audiobook was really good just like a fun YA paranormal kind of mystery type thing and then it's so unserious, fun, just like candy, I don't know. It's gonna be hard to go from like this to this. This is like a, a weapon, a tome, serious business, and this is just like fun little goofy time. But we're gonna transition. I have 10 minutes left on the sprint, so I'm, I don't know what I'm gonna do in those 10 minutes. days later. Okay, I've had a long day today. I have my Rugrat shirt on because I'm an actual Rugrat today. We were doing fine and then I just had a little minty breakdown. So we went to one of my favorite bookstores. It's like a secret hidden gem because I'm like, oh, well, I wanna go book shopping, but I don't wanna go to like a bookstore where there's other people. 
and there's never any people in this bookstore so <laughs> Anyways, I am about to film my March TBR and I'm excited because I haven't actually filmed the TBR in quite a while. I mean, I did film one for February, so it's kind of a lie, but that was like not an actual TBR video. I just happened to put my TBR in the video, if that makes sense. Anyway, so I have these packages that I want to open with you guys first. Oh shit, I need to update you on my reading. I finished Queen of Shadows. So I did that. I had like 100 pages left and the first day of March I finished that, which yesterday was the first day of March. Okay, today's Saturday, yesterday was Friday. I finished it yesterday. And then I started Measure of a Man last night and I am already 192 pages in. I am obsessed so far with this fan fiction. This can be read for free. For free? You don't have to pay any money to read this fan fiction. You can read it online for free. I have a guide on my Instagram how you can get it on your Kindle or you can read it on your phone, whatever. My friend Mel found this copy for me. No money was exchanged. Do not go buy fan fiction. This is like a whole thing. So I don't, I don't mean to go on like a rant about this, but yeah, don't buy fan fiction. Don't pay for it because it's free. But anyway, I'm really loving this so far. This is Measure of a Man, part one, The Father. I'm annotating. I went to a little bookstore, I mean, a little uh, coffee shop this morning. You saw my little B-roll for that. Very aesthetic, cute. Anyway, yeah, so, okay. Let's open up these packages. What is that? Why is... What? That looks so ew. Why does it look like that? That is so disturbing. I think it accidentally like opened up the guts of the package and like honestly, I did not need to see that. Okay. I ordered more tabs because Honestly, this is kind of pathetic, but this green color right here is what I was looking for for Measure of the Man, for Measure of a Man. And I mean, I'm gonna use all, the, all of the colors in this, but this was stupid expensive. I think this was like eight or nine dollars. Why? I, I thought it was gonna come with way more than this. This is not it. Do not recommend. And then I got I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. This is obviously the um, mass market paperback edition. It was $7, so I, I bought it. So that'll go towards my, actually, I, I technically I bought it in January, I mean February. So this does not go towards March. In February, I think I got this book and another new book. I don't know, I did really, really good not buying books in February, so there's that. Okay, and then we have these, which these were purchased in 2023. They were pre-orders. And I know what one of them is. Um, I don't know what the other one is, though. I mean, they're both from Waterstones. Oh my gosh, I'm about to break my nail. This is, oh my how pretty she's a little damaged oh shit look at that look at that oh my god and those edges look a little wonky it's like kind of it's fine whatever this is a signed edition of Empire of the Damned this has not been released in the United States yet I am a ding dong and I had no idea that it wasn't getting released in the United States on February 28th. The day came and I was like, why does everything say pre-order? Because I was going to get the audiobook. I'm so excited. There's this and I, uh, <laughs> like, did I buy two copies? I have no idea. I think I might have. Because I'm like, what else could this be? Yeah. <laughs> I got another copy. Why is this so Look at this. Look. How, why? For why? For what? 
but the edges on this one are nicer than the other one. So this one has dings like all over it. Honestly, like I don't think it's going to bother me that much because it's just the, it's not like the actual book is damaged. <sighs> Whatever. I'll have to figure out which edition I'm going to be reading. Look at the edges. Okay, you can tell the difference. Look at the difference. This one's all janky. This one's fine. Okay, I'm going to stop complaining about my new signed books. I'm super excited for this book. I think that's all the reading updates I had. I finished Queen of Shadows. Love the last like 150 pages. So good. Let me just, why am I not holding the book up? I read it all my tabs. I mean, not all of them, but like most of them. Let me see if I can show you some of my like most annotated pages toward the end here. Okay, this is a favorite. It's simple, but it gets the point across. Why is this not focusing? Okay, here's another section. Just kind of cute, you know? I really love the last like 150 pages of this book. So good. I mean, the whole book is really good, okay? But I really, I caught in like this huge mood to reread everything. And ironically, now I'm in the mood to read all of the new books. So rereading books, if you're in a slump, just reread your favorite books because it will cure you. Okay, I don't wanna promise that, but it, you know, the likelihood is very high. My eyes are like dry as fuck and I'm tired. Okay, I'm gonna fill my TBR, update my journal. And honestly, I don't know how much reading I'll get done tonight, but I really want to read more of Measure of a Man because it's so good. Like, it's slow burn. It's not like, you don't, don't pick up this Germione thinking it's going to be like romantic off the top because it's not. This is part one. There's three parts. Okay. You can download it for free on archiveofourown.org. There's even an audiobook. I'm in the business of misery, let's take it from the top She's got a body like an hourglass, it's ticking like a clock It's a matter of time before we all run out When I thought he was mine, she caught him by the mouth I waited eight long months, she finally set him free I told him I couldn't lie, he was the only one for me Two weeks a week, caught on fire She's got it out for me, but I wear the biggest smile It's been a few days since we talked. I think it's been a whole week. <laughs> I, this week was freaking insane, okay? Like, literally insane. The good thing is, though, is that I've been reading, okay? I've been reading like a machine. And I would like to report that I finished two books. This one and another one that I'll talk about in just a second. Unfortunately, not all good things, not all good little updates. So, Bonesmith, how, mm, mm, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to give you a little recap of what this book's about, but I will say my thoughts and my feelings. In the beginning, I was like, okay, the world building, the magic system feels pretty fleshed out and well established. There is some info dumping, but it's not like you know, like I'm just gonna keep reading. And about probably two fourths, wait, that's literally half. <laughs> about a third of the way through, 
I was like, okay, this book seems to have some like pacing issues because there were like random moments of info dumping that literally would go in one eye and out the other. Things that just didn't mean anything to me and I was just kind of like, am I supposed to care about this? Also, there's, okay, so the book's called Bonesmith. There's Metal Smiths, Ghost Smiths, Silver Smiths, Bone Smiths, all of the Smiths that you can think of. And it started to get a little annoying, like reading XYZ Smith this, XYZ Smith that. And yeah, so there's that. I can see why people are comparing this to Game of Thrones. And the reason is because there's a bunch of undead like bone things walking around it does take place in winter at least i think most of the book does so there's like that aspect so i can see why people are saying that but it's definitely not like game of thrones vibes you know it's just kind of like the bad season of game of thrones <laughs> i feel like though overall i never got to know the main character really well her name is ren um the romance was just okay for me it was definitely like boy falls first but it feels weird saying boy falls first because he did feel like a man um it didn't really feel super ya and that's i'm not saying that as a bad thing it just felt like i was reading this book for like an entire month and it's only been a couple of days but for some reason because this book's only uh it's less than 500 pages i think yeah it's about 450 pages and it just felt like it was just as long as Empire of the Vampire, if not longer. Like it just felt so long. And I think it was because of the pacing, honestly. Also, there's something that happens towards like the last third of the book, or no, towards the middle, I think, where he does like this gesture for her. And it's a really great gesture. It's really sweet and kind of him, but it felt very premature because it felt like, okay, it just felt, Pretty much. I don't want to say much because I don't want it to like spoil it you you know you if you plan on picking this book up but it just felt so premature and like overall I just kept zoning out of this book like I kept having to reread passages over and over again like I would start a chapter and then I would be like wait how did we get here and then have to go back and restart the character so I picked this up because Jody. And Jodi said that she, the Ren reminded her of Selena. I personally did not get that. Like she didn't remind me of anything really because I, I didn't feel like I got to know Ren enough. Like I didn't get much characterization from her. I didn't feel like she had much of a personality. And I don't know if it's because I kept zoning out and having to reread things. And I just wasn't, I tried so hard to be engaged. Like I was engaged. But the words would just like take me out of the story. I don't know what it was, but this one just kind of fell very flat for me. And I got to a point where I was like, I just want to, I just want to finish the book. Like, <laughs> I just want it to be over. There's a lot of telling and not showing. And the ending felt super, super unsatisfying for me. I know sometimes we can read books that are just like a little bit flat. And then the ending just kind of redeems it. And I thought that that was what was going to happen. I heard, well, I read on Goodreads because I was about like two thirds of the way and I was like, okay, I gotta like look at reviews. And I had read on Goodreads that the second half is a lot better and that it starts, to, the pacing starts to get better. And I just, for some reason, it just did not do that for me. I can't say the ending was like super predictable, but it wasn't, I don't know how to say this, it just wasn't satisfying to me. I did not feel like that was a satisfying ending. I don't want to say I wasted my time, but I was just kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, I kind of am not interested anymore. And I'm just so sad because I love the cover and I was so excited, but that's okay. Not every book is going to be a hit, right? We got to take our losses and move on. Am I going to pick up the second book? I don't know. Maybe I can like borrow it from the library or something, but I just, I don't, I don't know. If I hear maybe really good things about the second, maybe I'll pick it up, but this author has not sold me on her writing and she hasn't sold me on her storytelling and just overall like yeah, the author just hasn't sold me to pick up any more of her other books. 
I'm not saying the book was bad. I'm just saying this one wasn't for me. I think that if you really like Carrie Maniscalco, you might really like this because a lot of the writing felt very similar and I don't mean that in a bad way because I really loved the last book in the Kingdom of the Wicked series. Yeah, her writing kind of reminded me of that. But yeah, overall, this was very flat for me. I'm sorry I didn't have like a mid book check-in, mid reading check-in. I really meant to, but like this week just really got away from me and like after work every day, I just couldn't get myself to vlog. So then I finished Empire of the Vampire and I really enjoyed this. I did listen to most of it on audio. I did read some of it physically. Um, this is, this was the third time I've read this and I gotta say like I really, the first and second time I read this, the amount of times that the word bitch is used did not even like click with me. It didn't even register with me. And then there was some upheaval a couple of years ago, honestly, when the book first came out about the word like bitch, how many times it was used in the book. And even the second time I read it, I was like, I didn't even register. And then the, this time, I think it's because I was reading it audibly only, for mainly, I started like hearing it and I was like, oh wow, like he does use the word bitch quite a bit. So there's that. I mean, I, it's, I'm not like lowering my rating or anything because I, Jay Kristoff, I don't mean this in a mean way, but he's kind of like a very sarcastic asshole. Jay Kristoff to me is not someone that I need to be wary of. Like I really love his writing and he's just a very blunt, sarcastic, dry writer. That's not going to vibe with everyone and I understand if people have problems with it. Like I totally, I totally do. But yeah, I really enjoyed this. A bunch of plot twists in this, and I'm really excited for Empire of the Damned. Um, I probably will wait until next week to pick up Empire of the Damned. I just need, like, something fun and, like, you know what I'm saying? And Empire of the Damned is going to be very dark. And then I got to page 300 of Measure of a Man. I don't know when the last time I stage you on this but I am really enjoying this it is a slow burn so I'm just like kind of taking my time with it I'm not trying to rush through it or anything and yeah this is a drawing again I already talked to you all about this so there's that um, and then lastly because this is like a new thing I want to incorporate in all of my vlogs at the end is I want to show you guys uh, my progress for my blanket and I kind of failed at knitting this past week so I really don't have there's not much progress in comparison to my last reading vlog because it's only been like two weeks but this is what it's looking like um, I'm actually in the middle of uh, a stitch right now because I apparently I got distracted but yeah this is what the progress is so yeah you'll get a new update in my next reading vlog on that like hopefully I can make some progress I just am trying to keep myself accountable I have some packages to open, but I really need to start a new reading vlog because this one's starting to get too long. And a lot of you commented, like, please don't shorten your vlogs. I really like long vlogs. So I don't plan on shortening them, but I do want to be aware of, like, trying to provide a mix of content of, like, shorter videos and longer videos. So I just, you know, have come to terms with the fact that my reading vlogs might be on the longer side. Occasionally, I'll try to have, like, I don't know a more a shorter one but yeah also I started another book on my Kindle if you want to know what it is you can check out my next vlog I'm pretty excited about it it's one that's getting like a lot of hype and I'm scared but I'm excited so yeah thank you guys so much for watching um, I feel like I am forgetting something for sure oh there was one thing I want to talk about for babysitters Kevin really quick that I forgot to talk to you guys about in my whenever I was updating and there was a quote that was said it said crying was worthless it accomplished nothing <laughs> and I, I just remember I took a little note in my phone and I, I just I'm like that's not true that's not true crying makes you feel good crying actually releases chemicals in your body yeah if you need to cry you just need to cry so that's that that's like so random and I don't know why I felt the need to say that but yeah thank you guys so much for watching and if you made it this far it's 
think you can go ahead and leave the knitting emoji. So that'll remind me that I need to be knitting because I did hardly any knitting the past two weeks and I really want to, I'm going to start doing that. So yeah, I need to get back into it because my goal is to finish the blanket. My goal is to finish the blanket by May. So I have March, April, May. It gives me three months. That's a lot of knitting to be done. So I gotta, gotta get to it. Anyway, yeah, hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day or night, wherever you are. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video. You can follow me on Instagram or subscribe to my Patreon if you want more content from me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.